So on today's episode of Just How Not Ready Am I for Pennsylvania Plow Day, we've got the truck. Yep, we've got the truck. So basically the mission is to do thermostats, water pump, fan, fan clutch, radiator, and potentially intercool it. So we gotta start taking it apart. Well, it's like two hours later, and you can see it's pretty well apart. Uh, the grill's off of it. Uh, the radiator's out of it. The fan and the fan clutch are off of it. Passenger side battery's out of it. Coolant's out of it. So, next step is, uh, sorry for it being dark. Next step is to do water pump and thermostats, radiator hoses, and then decide if I'm gonna try and use the Dodge intercooler or if I'm gonna go out and find a Duramax intercooler because apparently that's a much easier swap. I um, guess uh, time will tell on that one. But uh, anyway, there's my pile of parts. So that'll be it for this portion of the video and we'll see what tomorrow brings. Here we have the rare coming zona. Working on the 6.5 inferior turbo diesel. Look at him, struggling to comprehend the shittiness of this engine. But in all serious, I had to call in the big guns because if any of you guys know me, you'll know that, well, I'm just not really that good at anything. Uh, so, <laughs> so, you know, being that I got out of class early, Kyle got out of work early, it's like 81 degrees and gorgeous. Uh, we got the old water pump off which is that ugly fucking thing there. We got the new one here. Uh, just for a size comparison, this is kind of cool. Here's the old six blade fan, and then the new, what's that, I think nine blades if I counted right. And the clutch is quite a bit bigger as well, so this is the new Heath fan. Unfortunately, Heath Diesel, what the fuck, fucked up some of the gaskets, like this one here that we need. That's not supposed to be like that. And then this one's all, Covered anyway, so it's a Felpro 45554 timing cover set. Fortunately, Talon Napa kick ass, gonna have it here in an hour or two. But we're just uh, Kyle's trucking away on the thermostats, we're jamming. Maybe she'll be running in a week or two. Well, it's lunchtime, I don't remember what we were doing in the last one, but that's all off. Got the new two watt battery cables in the uh, custom flattened fender for the battery um, thermostats are in yep the battery cables are in so now we got to go out and do a whole bunch of shit and then uh, put it all back together I think that's how that goes this is uh, parts run number three we're, we're doing all right Both. We're in the coming, so we're gonna be. Ah, oh, ah, oh, the Jake break, ladies and gentlemen. The Jake break. Oh, the smoke. Go rattle the coal. Give her the dinner. Okay, it's the end of day two. The water pump is on. The battery is in. I just gotta finish um, attaching the battery tray. Right now there's just a self-tapper holding it in so I know where it's gotta wind out. But I'll probably, probably weld something. Um, let's see what else. Uh, upper radiator hose is in. Um, I added a check valve to the injection pump so it won't lose its prime if it sits. Uh, nose up, which I had been doing. Um, also tighten up a couple fittings. You can see the turbo is going to need, I don't know if I showed this or not, turbo wheel. It's got a couple nicks in it and some oil starting to seep in, so we're probably going to rebuild it, but that'll probably be after plow day. Uh, I got a belt, which uh, is for, it's in the car, it's for a 93, which 
doesn't have a vacuum pump, but it's a little bit too long. It's a, what was it? It was a K06-1010 or something like that. It's a, whatever that tells you, it's a six rib, 101 inch. Uh, and I'm gonna go back and get a six rib, 100 inch. And from what I've read, that will work. Um, so really we gotta just put the, the belt on. And then somewhere over here, yeah, we got the fan. That nut is an inch and seven eighths, which is bigger than what I've got. So Kyle's gonna bring a wrench tomorrow. So we gotta do the fan, the belt. And then we put the radiator in. And then we fill it and then we run it, and then it's good to go. So that's the end of day two. Here we have the rare coming zona working on the 6.5 inferior turbo diesel. Look at him. Struggling to comprehend the shittiness of this engine. Well, it's a uh, beautiful as frig day in a row number three It's like 81 Which is almost a little bit too warm, but uh, anyway Today we finished the truck All right Radiators in hoses are connected, but where's the serpentine belt? Oh, no Here's the serpentine belt so factory length is 101. We got rid of the vacuum pump and everyone said to run one inch shorter. This is a 100. This is still maxing out what the tensioner throw is. So we're gonna try a 99. All right, so on this point, at this point, it's pretty much the fan and then everything else. Um, I cleaned up this wire a little bit. Um, got these top post adapters for the accessories. I uh, ran the battery cables. I have to take them out and anti-seize the bolts because it's a stainless bolt. Um, they're actually ARP bolts, which is kind of cool. But anyway, at this point, we're just uh, waiting to throw the fan on and... Uh... <laughs> Typical 6.5 fashion. She's not going down without a fight. So the issue that we ran into was either a stuck thermostat or air in the coolant um, because the temperature kind of all over the place. Granted, it's just got straight water in it right now, but it, uh, the heat cycles were pretty crazy. So what I did is I cracked this leader valve here on top of the thermostat housing. You can see water's coming out, which I guess is a good thing, as long as there's not air. Really, the bleeder should be on this side of the thermostat, the hot side, but what do I know? The other thing that we were running into is that the upper radiator hose, wasn't there wasn't a lot of pressure in it. You know, I can squeeze it, and now when I squeeze it, listen to this. It's having a hard time building pressure and what I think it is <clears throat> is there used to be a little guy that would come out here that would for overflow and uh, and that's not there anymore now this is a new radiator cap it's the one that was supplied with the with the kit So we'll figure it out. Well, the cooling system's about as done as it's gonna get. I got a couple small things that I gotta pay attention to, but other than that, ship it. We've got a rare back-to-back -back double feature Project Nice truck. You can't see him. I got some pots. Boom. Today we will be installing an AFE 24 435 air filter and a 28 113 pre-filter. The reason for this 
that will show you. Get these off of here. So, with the battery relocated, this is where the filter is going to sit. And this is the K&N. And K&N, well, you see, there's a clamp, and I still took it off the end. The reason for that is the K&N, and this is the direct factory replacement, just has this silicone rubber boot. It doesn't actually grab anything. Um, so it was it's tough to get, being that I don't have factory intake parts on it. And what we're going to do, let me just get this opened up quick. All right, so here we have the old K&N filter, which is a direct replacement for the K47 box, which as you can see, I'm no longer running. This is the AFE filter. For all intents and purposes, it's the same size. However, it is conical. And as you know, conical adds 40 horsepower. Um, so what we're gonna do, and the other thing too, you'll notice that the ID, oops, a daisy. The ID on the AFE is just a hair larger. Um, it's four inches ID, and all of my intake piping is four inch, which is gonna allow me to just run a cleaner, tighter setup on it. So I'm gonna go grab a piece of four inch pipe, and uh, we're just gonna send it. All right, well, there it is. And you can see, see originally there was a duct. There's like a hole down here beneath the headlight. And what the duct does is it redirects the cold air up into the fender. And there's a hole there, which is where the factory air box pulls from. So technically speaking, it pulls cold air from the factory. But now you're trying to funnel all this air up into the fender and then out, and then you gotta make it do a 180. And it just seems really like indirect. So this way, air comes through the grill, into the filter, boom, boom, Bob's your uncle. There it goes into the turbo. So <clears throat> I am planning to build some sort of box type device to go around this that will uh, hopefully, you know, further um, influence it to to just draw cold air from the fender um, or rather from the grill. But uh, that's uh, that's it for the time being. Looks pretty good, I think. All right, so uh, the video taking was kind of inconsistent, but I'll show you what we did. So you guys have all seen the three gauges that are on the pod, or on the pillar rather, uh, exhaust temp, boost, and fuel pressure. And uh, because the factory gauges for water temp and oil pressure were kind of inaccurate, boom, we added uh, matching gauges for water temp and oil pressure. This is a uh, factory overhead console out of a Suburban. So we added those in. Um, we've also got two little overhead dome light things, move the high idle switches up there, have a little bit of storage. So pretty cool little setup. Um, the truck is now basically an oil change away from being ready to go to Pennsylvania. And um, that's about it. So this is going to wrap up the project nice truck slash rebuild half the truck slash get the truck ready for Pennsylvania video. Stay tuned for more. Thanks.